hello, hello, and welcome back to Thrift Flip Thursday. If you're new here, it's the day that I basically start and finish, fingers crossed, a thrift flip. Today, we're going to be transforming this massive cotton striped sheet. Actually, I think it's a duvet cover, which is good news because we have twice the fabric and also some really nice buttons somewhere in this pile. I made a few sketches and shared them on my Instagram story and TikTok and Reels to get some feedback on which one I should move forward with. So hopefully you saw that, hopefully you were able to vote and hopefully we're going to be making your design or the one that you picked. But we are going to be moving forward with number one because that was my personal favorite and it also received the most positive feedback. And if we have any fabric left over, I might try to do a modification of option two because originally I was inspired by a top that was really similar to that. We'll have to see because the first one is going to require a lot of fabric. So I'm going to start by draping a pattern because I don't have one yet. This is very different than any dress I've ever made. So I think the most time consuming part will probably be draping the dress. And hopefully I'll be sharing that in the caption or comments below. I'm going to share a Google Drive link. Let me know if you guys have trouble accessing that. I got a few DMs after my last video saying that it was like reaching the max on Google Drive. So if you're having issues, I'll just send you the link separately, but let me know. And of course, let me know if you try it. And lastly, I just wanted to say, please keep in mind that it is a free sewing pattern. So. I do my best to adjust the sizes from my size to have a whole range of sizes, but I don't have a mannequin that is not my size, so it's difficult to test out the patterns. But if you do try the pattern and it doesn't fit true to size, please let me know so I can adjust it accordingly so it'll be right for the next person. All right, now for the fun part, let's make a dress. I just realized I'm completely out of muslin, so ironically I'm using another old sheet to drape in order to use the other old sheet. So I wish I had muslin because I feel bad using this, but we're working with what we have, so. Okay, I just finished the pattern and I still need to tweak it a little bit for the final design, but it is mostly done and I just cut out the final pattern pieces and my apartment is looking rough right now. It's been a really long time since I've worked on a project this large. So I'm taking over every corner and cutting on the floor. Lily thinks it's some sort of game. I'm going to start assembling the pieces. And my plan is basically to make the lining and outer out of the same fabric to add some stability because I really want it to be almost corset like. I want it to fit really well and I want to be able to tie it really tight in the back. I think I'm going to add a zipper to like the bottom part of the waist and then maybe have like a lace-up feature in the back as well. Still working through those details and kind of improvising, but I'm going to get started on that and go ahead and sew those pieces together. Okay, so like I said, I still need to make some modifications because I mainly draped it on my mannequin. For example, I think I wanna bring the boat neck down a little bit to show just a teeny bit of my collarbone which I was thinking that it would be brought down just whenever I do the inner layer because my plan is to just sew the pieces together along this edge and then fold it over. So I'll lose, I don't know, about a quarter inch. But now that I'm looking at it, I think I might have to trim a little, which is kind of annoying because it's going to be more difficult now that it's not laying completely flat. But yeah, it's composed of this one central panel two on the side of the front, and then two panels in the back. Now I need to start thinking about the inner layer that I'm going to be adding, making some alterations, and then of course, adding the volume to the skirt. I'm getting used to these stripes. Whenever I was draping it in the black fabric, I actually really liked that. So this is new, seeing it in the striped fabric, but I think I'm going to really like it. And I'm pretty pleased with how these lined up for the most part. They're a little, wait, I can't tell if it's that they're off or just that my um, sticky bra is a little off, but I tried to be really careful when I was cutting the pattern and make sure that it was really aligned super well. So 
striped fabric. More difficult to work with, but it's fun. All right, so once you've assembled both the outer and lining pieces of the bodice, go in with an iron and flatten all of the seams, then lay the outer and lining pieces together with the right sides facing each other. Sew along the neck and arm edges using quarter inch seams. Make sure you don't sew along the waist and top of the straps. Once that's done, flip the garment inside out with the right sides facing outward, then wiggle the stitch out of the ditch and iron the edges flat. Okay, unfortunately I am stopping here for now because I am marathon training right now and I have to go do my workout before going to dinner with another couple Ari and I are meeting tonight. But the bodice is mostly complete. You can see I'm holding it right now because it's a little loose. I always like to make these things a tiny bit too loose so I don't have to obviously add fabric after the fact. And as you can see, I ironed and folded back this top. So I don't think I'm going to add a top stitch. I just wanna like leave it really clean without a hem along the side. And I still need to connect the sleeves up here because I just pinned those for now. Okay, I am back. It is now Friday and I'm about to start working on the dress again. I had a thought yesterday while I was walking Lily where I thought about adding buttons to, I'm holding too much right not to explain this. I thought about adding buttons to the little straps because there were already some little fabric covered buttons on the duvet cover and I wanted to incorporate those, but at one point I was thinking about adding them to the back but I think with how tight I want it to fit in the waist and just all along the bodice, it would be too much pressure on the buttons if that was the main closure mechanism. But I think on the straps up here, it could look really nice to have it kind of just like hooked together. Although I didn't, I didn't leave that much space on the strap. So I'm really hoping that I have enough fabric to do that. And I think that would look really cool. So. I'm gonna try to do that and also start adding the ruffles to the sides. Okay, I'm not going to explain this in great detail because I have covered invisible zippers here before and I don't want to bore you, but basically I ironed the zipper teeth away from the edge then sewed it in. If you want a more detailed tutorial, you can check out the video linked in my caption. Okay, I am back with an update. I just added the zipper to the back and I made it very loose. Like I said earlier, I left a lot of excess fabric because I wanted to make sure, you know, I didn't cut it too close. But now that it's pretty loose, I think I actually want to add in a lace-up feature. I didn't want the back to be like completely open with the lace-up feature because I wanted it to hit where it's hitting now. But my thought process is that I'm going to cut some holes into where the pattern comes together right here. Not a hole in the actual fabric, but just a hole in that stitch where the pattern came together. And then add like little fabric, you know, little fabric loop-de-loops and then lace it up. I want it to all be fabric. I don't want it to have like metal grommets because one, I've been doing that way too much lately, but also I don't think it really suits this dress. And I think then if I add those, it'll fit nice and snug. And it'll also add to like the bustliness of this in the back because yeah I'm thinking it'll like kind of tuck I'm trying to situate it like kind of tuck in like where it folds I don't know it's hard to see with the stripes because <laughs> it's such an optical illusion but I'm thinking it'll kind of like fold over into like a sandwich situation and I'm going to start adding those now I will try to indicate that on the actual pattern whenever I share it because as you guys can tell, I just am rolling with the punches, but it would definitely be more convenient to add those sooner. I think I'm going to cut like maybe a half inch strip of the fabric and then fold it, sew along the edge and then flip it inside out and basically make a long ribbon that I'll use to lace it up once I have the little loops, but also to make the little loops very technical terms little loops hopefully that makes sense but i think once i actually do it you'll understand what i mean okay let's see i basically made one long strip with this fabric and i flipped it inside out i pressed it a little bit and like wiggled the stitch out of the ditch right there and then cut all of these into the same length and sewed them together on the side 
That way I can have like really uniform loops and also I think it'll be easier to sew them into the actual garment. So I'm going to sew them onto this strip and then cut it down the center. That way I have like one strip that has loops on this side and then one that has it on the other side. And then whenever I go to put it into the garment, I can just sew the strip into each side. Know what I mean? I think that's the best way, the easiest way, and probably the best way to keep it consistent because what I don't want is for these loops to be not perfectly aligned in the actual garment. If you think about if one loop is like up here and the other one's down here, and then whenever I cinch it, it's going to really screw with the whole fit. And that's what we definitely do not want. Okay, I finished the little lace up feature and I think it looks pretty nice. Now I'm about to start on the skirt. So I'm back to cutting on the floor because it is going to be massive. I basically cut out several chunks of fabric that kind of flared out the bottom to give it that extra spin. You can also use a large rectangle if you don't care as much about the spin. After that, I gathered the pieces at the top by making two long stitches without back stitching, then pulled the thread to bunch and gather the fabric. Once adding it to the bodice, I trimmed the bottom edge and hemmed it. For the buttons on the top of the sleeve, I used the buttonhole presser foot that comes with most sewing machines. You should have one, but if it didn't come with your machine, you can also purchase them separately. To use this and get the correct button size, you'll need to add whatever button you're using to the back holder, then pull this lever down. Make sure it goes behind this little notch to ensure you get the correct buttonhole length. Select the buttonhole setting on your machine, then press start. The machine basically does all of the work for you, but I lightly guided the fabric since the garment was quite heavy at this point. Carefully trim the fabric out of the center of your buttonhole, then add the button to the other side. When you're done, it should look like this. All right, guys, time for the grand reveal. This is the finished dress. And I would like to say that I just finished this, but unfortunately that is not true. I actually finished this about a month ago. So if you came from my TikTok and you've been waiting for this tutorial for the past month, I sincerely apologize. I was taking forever to edit this video and also did a bit of travel. But that brings me to my next point. If you are a video editor or if you know of somebody who is a video editor, preferably somebody who also knows a thing or two about sewing, doesn't need to be an expert, but at least knows some basic terms, I am looking to hire a video editor. Obviously it's paid and I would love to bring somebody on just because I think I can make way more tutorials and way more thrift flip Thursdays if I had somebody to help me with the editing process. So let me know in the comments if that interests you or you can reach out to me on Instagram DMs. And as far as the dress goes, I'm pretty pleased with it. I'll start with the things I love about it and then get into some critiques. I'm really happy that I added these buttons up here. I think this is a really nice feature. Let me get a closer look at the buttons. Yeah, they look really nice and I hadn't done buttons in this way before, so it's fun to bring in something a little different. I'm also really happy with how the lace up in the back looks. Again, something that is a little different than how I usually do it. I usually like to add grommets to pieces if I'm adding a lace up, but I think this looks really nice and it's not too distracting from the piece itself. The last thing I wanted with this piece was to have grommets and then have like the gap of skin that you get sometimes when you have a lace up feature. I wanted it to just be one panel right here. So that looks pretty nice, I think. And I personally like the little bustling that you get of the added fabric in the back. It's kind of fun. Now for some things that I changed in the pattern for you guys and also things that I would do differently if I made this dress again. One thing is I would like to add a little bit of boning to the bodice. I don't know if you've noticed, but I am pulling it down to flatten this bit out quite frequently. If I move around too much, it kind of, not too much, but it just bunches up a little bit right there in the midsection. And I think adding some boning would really prevent that and make it a little bit sleeker. So if you want to add boning to yours, I think that's a great idea, but I did not specify that bit in the sewing pattern. so. Let me know if you give it a try. Something I did change was I originally had sketched it out and cut the pattern to go into a wider panel, that kind of rectangular flare down the center, but I ended up bringing it to this point instead. 
I actually did add the rectangle, but I forgot to film it because I just really did not love it. It wasn't spinning quite how I wanted it to. I don't know if you've noticed, but I really love a good spinny dress and I think this spins quite nicely. And the rectangular feature was just blocking that spin, if that makes any sense. So if you would like to add that, go for it, but it was not my cup of tea. So I decided to switch it up. Also, I kind of screwed up hemming this. One side is a teeny bit shorter and yeah, I'm standing on my tiptoes so you can see the bottom of this, but I noticed and didn't want to shorten the whole thing because I prefer this length and I thought it was minor enough to where nobody would really notice. And of course, one of the first comments I got on the TikTok that I shared of the dress was about the uneven length. So yeah, not my finest hour. I was <laughs> cutting off, trimming the bottom and just got a little sloppy, but you know, you live and you learn and you realize that people on TikTok notice everything. I also had to get a little patchy with the skirt. So whenever I flare this out, you can kind of see I had to attach several different panels to make up for the fact that we were ultimately working with scraps. I feel like that's all of the red flipping is kind of making do. But if you are working with fabric by the yard, I would recommend using one large panel. But I basically just gathered fabric along this top edge and then connected it to the bodice. I specified that in the sewing pattern that I left in the caption, but honestly, you don't really need to measure it. You don't really need to follow that pattern. I kind of roughly guessed the amount of fabric that I used for that, but ultimately if you make the bodice with the pattern and then gather a large amount of fabric, I think you should be fine. It doesn't need to be that precise. And as always, I am sharing the free sewing pattern in the caption below. Please let me know if you have any questions about the pattern and also if you have any issues with it. So if you end up trying it out and it doesn't fit true to size or if you notice I've made a mistake, which hopefully is not the case. I think I did a pretty good job editing this pattern. But if that is the case, please let me know. That way I can edit it for the next person. I want it to be in tip top shape and if you help me improve it, then we can all improve together. All right, I'm going to wrap up this outro because I'm desperate to turn on my AC unit and it is too loud to talk over, but I hope you have a great day and thank you so much for your support. Let me know what you wanna see more of and let me know if you have any questions and if you end up making this dress. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm.